What up everybody, it's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge YouTube channel with another Impact Wrestling review. So, I'll probably record this show, I mean, excuse me, uh, review the show like this for another week. And uh, so, if you're keeping up, I was, uh, I'm on air military orders right now for the Air Force. I have a course I'm taking in Mississippi. At first they cancel the class. And then at the last minute, they send me to the class. So, if, you know, I've already talked about this. I forgot my microphone. And then now they're cutting our class uh, three weeks early. So uh, Friday, I will be en route back to Illinois. And then uh, probably the week after that, myself and TW will hopefully get into doing live streaming, reviewing the show. Right now, we're looking at every Friday night. That's not going to happen right away because my work schedule doesn't allow for Fridays at the moment. But uh, I'm working on that. So it might be as late as like Sunday morning or something like that, but we're going to work towards doing that. So just just bear with us. I know getting a review like three days before the episode or two days before is you know not optimal, but that may be what happens. But uh, I'm probably going to give you this loose format like this this week, probably next week, maybe one more week, but hopefully not. But I will be home next week, and uh, you know I'm going to look into some different types of content we can do here on the channel so I can kind of get things back to back to where they used to be. Uh, so first topic we want to talk about real quick is Rebellion. So we came out earlier today. I'm talking to you right now. Um, what is today? Friday. So came out earlier today that Rebellion is going to happen, but it's going to happen, happen as an Axis TV special. This is pretty disappointing because it's a huge downgrade to go from pay-per-view to Access TV special, no crowd, and you know we know that Impact delivers really good pay per views. They have for a while now, so you know is it going to be up to that same level without a crowd? We don't really know. Now here's the other question: Is the booking and the decision making and the outcomes of the match are things going to change? Are the actual matches themselves going to change? Because Sammy Callahan has said until the virus is clear that he didn't want to wrestle, so. We're going to see, you know, it's it's a, going to be a Rebellion-themed episode. I'm guessing it's going to be a two-hour episode as opposed to a three-hour pay-per-view. So that helps because they haven't uh, actually announced that many matches yet. Um, but go back to what I was saying. You have to wonder, are the outcomes and everything going to change? Because we're going to, you know, there, the possibility of spoilers is still there. Now, you know, common sense says, okay, it's an empty arena in Nashville. Impact shouldn't be leaking their own news, you know, their own results. But all it takes is one person, one cameraman, one person behind the scenes, you know. So hopefully that doesn't happen, and hopefully, hopefully when we get this Rebellion special, it is just, you know, it's a surprise for all of us, and we can almost treat it like watching a live show. Now, I was thinking this would have been a good opportunity to stream a pay-per-view for on Impact Plus, you know, maybe that brings new subscribers over to Impact Plus because I don't think their current strategy works. And I'm going to talk about that in the future uh, really, really in depth um, why Impact isn't growing the way they want to. Um, and it's not going to be a super negative thing. It's just going to be, you know, very, very honest. Um, but it's going to be built around one topic. Um, but, but that's for the future. Uh, but this could be an opportunity for them to, you know, possibly grow the app. Now, maybe they've, you know, backstage, I say backstage, but behind the scenes, they've talked about this and it's okay, you know, maybe this is a possibility. They've, whatever reason, decided uh, television's the best way to go. Well, maybe because they'll have more viewers on television compared to what they would have on the app. We don't really know, but I'm sure they've weighed all possibilities, but I would have thought this would have been a good opportunity to stream on the app. They're already getting uh, familiarity familiar familiarity with that uh doing the monthly impact plus specials so let's get into the actual episode of impact i'm not just saying this because i'm trying to be kinder and gentler to impact i really like this episode this was my favorite episode in a while for for various reasons and uh, you know obvious obviously one of them you know i'm gonna say it uh don cow's not on commentary i'm actually really impressed with madison rain and uh if you if you guys were you know watching TNA when they would bring her on to commentate for the knockouts like it was a, a mess, uh, but now she's really comfortable in there, 
you know, is there a little bit of flip-flopping, like, you know, between heel face? Yeah, but, you know, I think she does a really, really good job. I brought this up last time I reviewed the show that, uh, you know, the commentary is uh, on Josh's end. It, it's becoming like him just asking the color commentator, color commentator a bunch of questions instead of, like, really calling the action. And uh, it, pay attention next time episode comes on it doesn't matter what it is it's it's just like this q a almost like a podcast like back and forth and uh i i don't enjoy it but um but madison rain was a breath of fresh air and most people i talked to agreed with that now as much as i said i really liked the episode this opening uh promo by willie mack was rough um i think one of the endearing things about willie mack is when he's out there and he's talking he he is very much talking like himself you know you get that genuine feeling from him but uh promo wise acting wise you know what i mean like he's he's got some work to do and uh when you get on a microphone you know i know this from podcasting youtubing doing music um being an instructor in the military you know even me talking to you right now you I'm projecting my voice to you in a different way than if you were just talking to me one on one. You know what I mean? And and Willie just gets on a mic and he's just, he's just in here and he's just talking. He's like, man, this and this. You know. So I, I think he has to work on that voice projection a little bit. But they get they got to work with him on the promos a little because he is clearly going to be a big part of the future. But they have to tighten a few things up with him. So uh, wasn't a really big fan of that op- opening segment. But I will say he's there is a genuineness about him which I, I can really appreciate. Um, so he takes on Reno Scum. Most of you know I'm a really big Reno Scum fan, so I obviously wasn't a fan of them losing to him two on one. You know I knew that was going to happen. I think we all knew that was going to happen. But uh, you know the match itself was was actually pretty good, and I thought Reno Scum looked really good. I just I wish you know after the match they did a post match beatdown. I wish Ace would have come down before the match was over. You know, uh, just broke up the last pinfall or something like that. That way Reno Scum doesn't have to take a, a loss to one person. But they uh, they announced, uh, I think we already pretty much felt this was going to happen, but it's going to be Willie Mack versus Ace Austin at the pay-per-view, or I say the pay-per-view, but at Rebellion. I have a hard time believing Willie Mack wins that match, but there's there's definitely good things coming for Willie, especially when... Rich Swan comes back, but between the two of them, Swan and and Mac, they have, they're going to have to work on some of the presentation and some of the promos because you know they may ultimately be the team to take the titles off the North, and the North is you know they're firing on all cylinders, they're flawless in, in what they do, and uh, it's going to be a huge downgrade if they don't you know fix those little things about Willie and uh, and um, and Rich Swan. Sorry about that. So the um, the Kylie, the Kylie Ray segment with Gail Kim was excellent. She's a she's a great actress. I don't know how much experience she has because she's pretty much new to TV at this point. But anytime she's been on TV so far, it's only been a couple times. Obviously, she's she nails it. She's really good at what she does. I like the interaction with Susie, and then very unceremoni- unceremoniously, they let us know Kira is uh, taking on. Kylie Ray at Rebellion. So that should be a good match. That's a, that's a good knockouts match. It's a very fresh match. We got a couple other fresh knockouts matches tonight. Makira, she challenged Susie. And we'll get into that match a little bit later. Kira, her, her acting is getting much, much better too. Um, I'm sure it helps being a, a heel because when she was a face, she was struggling with that a little bit. Chris Bay versus Daga. Like, wow, this was um, excellent. They got a lot of time, you know, almost 14 and a half minutes. So I I thought Daga was going to win the match, uh, which I was hoping wasn't going to be the case because Chris Bay came out, he had his debut, and then he had the scramble match where I talked about this last week, real random heel turn. And uh, I was very concerned with the the how he was going to be presented. Now, when I said last week that I liked the Kylie Ray signing better than Chris Bay, Chris Bay from a talent standpoint and his ceiling – is a better signing, but Kylie Ray from a, a a buzz standpoint, from someone who genuinely could have wrestled anywhere and chose Impact, like that. That's why that was a, a bigger signing because she had more name value. 
and she's going to be a big, bigger player in the knockouts than Chris Bay most likely will be in the X division for a little while. But even though I had those concerns, the presentation of Chris Bay here was a lot better, uh, much improved, and now I feel like I can fully buy into him in this heel, egotistical manner because we all we had to do was focus on him versus Daga. This wasn't this scramble match where in the, all of a sudden he's a heel all of a sudden, but then we're focusing on other guys too. You know what I mean? Like the... The way they were able to deliver it, much improved. The match was was really, really excellent. And I'm really happy that Chris Bay got the win. This is one of those matches, though, where neither guy is fighting for anything. And that's why it would be really nice to see that mid-card title come. You see other companies do it. AEW got to the point, like, we got to do this. Because they weren't going to do it at first. But now they got to the point because too many people were fighting for nothing. So, you, you know, you could argue that these guys will be in the X Division title picture, obviously. I think Daga is actually a very good uh, candidate to take it off Ace Austin. But again, the promo skills, you know what I mean? Ace Austin's probably going to hold this for quite some time. But the X Division's getting real serious, real impressive with who they're adding. Uh, and, and, you know, Chris Bay was just such a good addition. And the way he won the match, I mean, it. We're, when I was growing up, heels used to win like that all the time, holding on to the ropes, you know? It, Especially in the X Division, we don't see that because in the X, I, I po- I've pointed this out like quite a bit over the years. And if you really think about it, it's, it's very true. When you have an X Division match, the babyface wins a good 90% of the time. The only time the heel wins is if the heel's the champion. They're either winning the championship, obviously, or they're the champion defending the title. But if you think about... X Division champions wrestling in non-title matches. You know, Dave Chris lost several. I want to say Matt Seidel lost a couple. Um, and then uh, Ace Austin actually hasn't, with the exception of that table match. Trevor Lee used to lose on a regular basis as long as the title wasn't on the line. So it always seems like the X Division says, okay, high flying, we're doing this and this, and then the hoorah baby face at the end. So this, this was kind of a, you know, a switch for me. And as I said, they're always fighting for nothing. So now that Chris Bay wins this match, you can actually have a rematch. You can, you know, build it into something where Daga wants another crack at Chris Bay. So really, really excellent. Backstage, the uh, I thought the Johnny Bravo segment with Taya uh, was really funny. I enjoy that quite a bit. Uh, last last week I had talked. No, it wasn't last week. It was the last beep side po- B side podcast I did. Uh, some people got mad at me because I. I said that I didn't like the Taya segment that was the uh, the Housewives thing. And you, you've already heard me talk right now with between Willie Mack, Rich Swan, um, Chris Bay. I keep talking about presentation. And presentation is important because there has to be consistency in how someone comes across on screen. And, you know, with Taya, if you look back at that, you know, Housewives segment, like, for what? You know what I mean? Like, where is that... I, I, you, you could you could argue that that was part of the Rosemary storyline with whatever the hell they're doing with her. You could argue that, but you've got Taya one week in the main event teaming with Michael Elgin, and then the week before that she's you know announced to be in the lockdown match, and that but the week before that it's, it's no it's the same ep, same episode actually, the, the the silly housewife stuff, and now she's kind of back doing the knockout thing. So it, what is it? You know what I mean? That's a uh, my only real concern with what they're doing with her but i'm glad to see her back in the title picture because i said this a lot i really didn't think at one point she was going to come back to the company because i said what she was a knockout champion for like over a year you know she is she really just gonna lose a title and try to win the title back you know what i mean i I just felt like she was gonna do something else you know but I'm, i'm glad to see her back in because when she lost the title you know they had her in the bar where she was kind of getting drunk and all that but she didn't uh, until now, appear to want that title back. So, apparently, they announced they announced it later in the show, but I think it was it might have been announced earlier too, like very um, under the under the table to where they said they were gonna she was gonna take on um, Jordan Grace of Rebellion. So I don't know when they delivered that though is very unceremonious, just like they seem to do when they announce pay per view matches. It's the strangest thing, uh, I think Full Metal Mayhem is one of my favorite, favorite matches. 
Now I understand it's you know kind of close to you know an extreme rules match or old school where no disqualification, but you know we incorporate the latter, and usually when these matches happen, they're they're really good. So I'm a big fan of Full Metal Mayhem. I'm a big fan of getting this, but you know Full Metal Mayhem with the knockouts. That's that's going to be really excellent, and I don't know who wins that. Maybe Ty gets the title back. I don't I don't really know. Um, it's weird with Jordan Grace because she was, you know, again, I'm talking about presentation and consistency. Madison, and, and let me back up. Obviously, I, you know, I talked about this before. The show has been heavy, heavily edited the last several weeks, okay? Um, I was told it's been heavily edited. But I'm still talking about the presentation here to where Madison Rain was doing this open challenge thing, the golden opportunity that died in three episodes, and then Jordan Grace was kind of like, well, I'm doing an open challenge. That died after an episode. I thought they were going to mesh, mesh together, and, and they're not. So what the hell is going on with that? Maybe it has to do with the editing. Who the hell knows? But it just seems like Madison Rain is either poised to take the title off Jordan or she's going to find someone who can. You know, I, as I said, I thought Kelly Klein was going to be, you know, in, in a perfect world debuting at Rebellion. So, um which I really hope they still bring her because, you know, you add her to Kylie and your, and your women's division is is really, really serious. But we are getting that knockouts title match. Again, they just kind of threw it at us. Uh, no no real, you know, they, 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 you know what I'm getting at. Uh, the Rascal segment, I don't usually enjoy the Treehouse segments. I've only ever enjoyed like one or two, but I found this, this one to be very comical. Uh, the Deaners, I, I'm getting, you know, bigger and bigger on the Deaners every week. I think they're really good actors, and you, you hear that I'm focusing on acting a lot lately, just because I'm I'm seeing there's such a discrepancy um, between the good actors and the bad actors, and there's not a whole lot in the middle. And right now, I'm just appreciative of those who are cutting good promos and 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 just carrying themselves well. And the Deaners are really believable in their gimmick and what they do. So I thought they made it really funny. And uh, the Triple XL edition was cool. I can tell Larry D, once he gets going with the mic and everything, he's gonna be be pretty special. He was, uh, he was, he was a good pickup. Uh, Havoc took on Madison Rain. This was really random, but it was a fresh knockouts match and I'm all for fresh knockouts matches. It was just very random, heel versus heel. You know, Havoc and Sue Young came back from the Undead Realm or whatever the hell last week. And and yet on this episode, Rosemary's doing this, Sue is doing this, Havoc is doing this. There's no follow-up whatsoever. And uh, we have no idea where it's going with any of them. Uh, so this was really, really random of a match. I don't understand why it happened because... As I said earlier, I think they're trying to build Madison to do something, whether it's a managerial role or trying to get the you know that six knockouts reign, you know. So <laughs> it was just odd. And then to have her, you know, the whole when the when the episode started, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna have her step out of the booth and wrestle and come back in the booth. I mean, that's you got to do what you got to do. Uh, and she she played it off actually really well. I, I was worried how that was going to come across on TV, but she did a, a good job saying that she's been carrying Josh on commentary, which she has been, because uh, that's the commentary style now. Uh, ask questions of the color commentator and let them give their opinion all night. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Tessa had you know the backstage segment with Eddie. If, when this was happening, I was going to say, okay, there's a lot of Tessa and Eddie and Michael Elgin talking over the past few weeks and sometimes less is more but by the time by the time the end of the night happened um and i really should have got into the main event first like i like to do but i was going chronologically chronologically here by the end of the night by the way with the way everything happened i can see where it was very important they all had their their talking segments jimmy jacobs interviewed ken shamrock um i've already said i don't have a lot of interest in him versus sammy Especially because now with Rebellion, is Sammy even going to compete? We, we don't know, but um, I, don't, I don't have a lot of interest in what they're doing. But I, but I do have interest in Sammy because I want to know 
where they're going with it. And as I've said, you know, you either has to be part of OBE or away from OBE, but they can't be so close to each other gimmick wise. Uh, Dave and Jake Chris took on Rhino and Dreamer. You guys already know I'm going to be upset that uh, OBE lost. Now, they are trying to communicate to us that they're on a losing streak or they're lost without Sammy, but it's not a clear communication. They've only said it maybe twice. Um, I think they've said it twice on commentary, and then um, uh, Dave said it in an actual segment that we need to end this, end this losing streak. So you know I'm upset with this. But I guess I'm kind of optimistic because now I think they're probably going to go somewhere where you're going to find OVE a new leader. And I've been a you know big proponent that they bring Jake's wife on because you know she seamlessly can fit into the gimmick. It would be something different to have you know a female leading them to the promised land, and they can beef up the knockouts division. So there's you know OVE is not. Yeah. Yes, they've been losing for over a year now on a very consistent basis after being tag team champions. But anything can be fixed with a strong repackage. You know, if if they're just going to be the same three OVE guys and they start winning again, and that's not... You, they're not going to get anywhere. And then if they won the titles, I don't think it would get over. But, but if you take this opportunity to semi-repackage them, say, okay, now they have a, a clear leader again... And all of a sudden, now they start winning matches. This could work. So I'm I'm optimistic with OBE to where before I'm kind of like, you know, what the hell. Uh, but I still think Rhino and Dreamer getting the win is still the wrong call every time. I don't care what the storyline is. And um, let's uh, the 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 stuff in the bar with Rosemary and Swinger didn't care for it. I'm, I'm trying to also be optimistic that Rosemary is, that they're going somewhere with this. <laughs> they, they have to be, but it, um, I don't particularly like it. Kira versus Susie. This I liked a lot because Susie, I was really excited when Susie wrestled last time against Rosemary. And it, it didn't last very long, and then it went backstage. She actually wrestled a full match. Um... In character you know I'm gonna go back to the presentation a little bit when she goes for the pin and at the two and she holds up the two can does she know how to wrestle or not know how to wrestle you know clearly she does because she's you know again they're, they're just not communicating it well she's able to tap her inner Sue young you know but months ago when they acted like Rosemary was gonna train her to wrestle when they were having a friendly exhibition, like that made sense to me storyline wise, and I could have bought that if they, Rosemary's working with her for a few weeks, you know what I mean? But now she just all of a sudden she's out there and she's wrestling. She's using some of Sue's moves, so it's not that big of a deal to be honest, you know, because they they have said that she knows she's Sue now, so she's she's channeling that. But I enjoyed watching her wrestle the entire match as the Susie character. And we know that the Sue Young contract situation is up in the air. That she, right now she's just kind of wrestling per appearance. I would be really disappointed if she ended up leaving at this point. The build towards the Susie thing was it took forever, and uh, now we're getting somewhere where she's actually a, a contributing member to the Knockouts division. And an another thing you guys have heard me say is that there's too many Knockouts right now who aren't really wrestling or they're not contributing to the division for one reason or another, you know, and now you're bringing her back into the division. I hope that she stays there. I hope that she finds a way to stick around to the end of the year. You know, her husband is in the company and she's being repackaged. It would be different if she was the Sue Young character. You know what I mean? Like what the hell do we, where do we go with that? You know, but they are doing something different with her. Being a baby face is probably something she hasn't done before. And uh, I'd have to believe she's enjoying doing the Susie thing. So let's let's hope she sticks around. This was a good win for Kira Hogan. Kira definitely is a future Knockouts champion. Uh, that that is definitely going to come. She's just a tremendous homegrown star. And uh, again, I'm talking about flip flops and inconsistencies. Madison Rain seems to be very 
pro Kiera here to where in the past it seemed like they were the last few weeks splitting up. So maybe it's because Madison sees something in Kiera to where she can wrestle Jordan. Who, we don't know. But again, just not clear. Elgin, um, I, I, I like seeing this different interaction with Elgin in the North because Elgin's promos the last few weeks, even though he's a good talker, he's saying the same thing over and over and over and over because he's wrestling the same guy over and over and over and over. You know, and this triple threat, I've already said I wish that it was a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I would have been okay with actually Elgin taking the title off Tess in a one-on-one -on -one, and then... You know, Eddie, you know, say Eddie just lost that best of five. Because for me, I didn't enjoy the best of five payoff. I like the matches, but the payoff to where we have to watch these guys five, fight five times when we've already seen them fight twice before that, before the series even happened. And we're, you know, um, at th this point, th you know, only three months into the year. I didn't like the payoff. I would have been okay with him taking the title off Tessa. I'm talking about Elgin. And then Eddie, you know, an underdog story of being able to beat Elgin finally. You know what I mean? Instead of doing this. Um, and I guess we're getting Tennille versus Taya next week. This is going to be interesting because is the presentation of Tennille going to be different? You know, we've seen these promos. My opinion was that they were trying to tap into Instagram Tennille, who's very big and very successful. You know what I mean? So is that where they're going to go with this i don't know but uh oh i didn't even finish what i was saying though but the elgin thing with the north actually was really good to where he got the north fired up and he actually wanted to step in you know like so that was that was all cool that was all well done the main event was excellent 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 loved it loved it loved it the north held nothing back on tessa just um again the the atlanta crowd is excellent Obviously, they've worked on the audio issues, but the crowd is, is engaged. They were engaged the whole time, and it's like now when we're watching the matches, we don't hear silence, you know what I mean? Even when they're just kind of working, you hear rumbling and everything, and that's that's the audio that, you know, they, they just big improvement in. I really appreciate it because, God, I've, um, I've been complaining about this for a long time now, a long time since I started doing this years ago, and the shows are sounding really good right now. And um, I, I hope they return to that venue and do more, more television there. Maybe replace New York or something like that. But I hope they do more there. But, you know, the crowd was just really into what was going on. Tessa caught fire at the end of this match, which I thought was came across really good on TV between the crowd and between her and, and everything. I didn't know who was going to win this match because I'm like, the North isn't going to lose. Eddie can't lose again. And I'm thinking, there's no way in hell Don Callis is going to let Tessa lose in a non-title match. I know champions lose all the time in non-title matches with Impact, but I was, I, I, I damn near went on record last week to say there's no way Tessa ever drops a non-title match because she doesn't really lose ever. And she lost here. But the story that they told at the end where they could have won the match and then she didn't tag Eddie in and then they just beat the shit out of her, just killed it, killed it, killed it, killed it. The North is amazing. Um, I've talked about Tessa's gear. I really love the blue. And then, you know, Eddie's really, um, really growing in his character where he's not really silly swinging around the stick, but he's, you know, they've, they've built him up really nice as well. Even when he takes losses, he still, still comes off strong. And even though he lost last week to the North, or not to the North, but the one-on-one -on -one with Josh Alexander, he didn't take the loss here. So he continues to, to look pretty strong. And then, Mike Elgin comes out at the end, flattens her. Eddie lets her because what it, what has Tessa been saying? I don't want help. And probably next week she's gonna be like, "Why didn't you help me?" You know what I mean? So uh, that's they're doing pretty good with that. But he just flattens her to end the show. And Impact isn't afraid to send the show off the air with the babe, the the heel, you know, with their hands up. And some companies don't do that. They're just like, "Oh, it's got to be the baby face to send them home," you know. So good episode. Enjoyed the matches a lot, and I'm excited to see where some of this stuff goes, and we'll, we'll keep it locked to see what happens with Rebellion and how they're going to deliver that show. But that is it for me now. I'm getting ready to hit the half-hour mark, so I wanted to get it under 40, so I'm glad I did it in 
30 and give it another week or two and we're going to start um, doing this more of in a podcast and I'm going to try to be doing it streaming live with TW just like the total nonstop impact guys were doing so uh, should be good should be fun and uh, as I said I feel like I got good chemistry with him so should be a good podcast thanks for checking me out this is the impact lounge and I'm out peace <laughs>